This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. So from there, uh, you're actually going to get to work razor a few more times during the year, including a raw, uh, that was taped in April. And it's the first time you have your big flashy entrance and you originally work a match with him. And I guess something didn't go as planned. So you guys have to come out later and fix some things. What do you remember of that? Is this just, you guys don't have your chemistry together yet? Or what can you tell us about having to go out? And I could not, I wish I could recall, but it, it could be something along the lines of Pat Patterson wanted us to not that we screwed something up, but Hey, go try this. It may work better. That finish didn't work or Hey, we need to fix this or something, in the truck or Hey, it's stunk guys. <laughs> You got to go back and do this. I'm not exactly sure. Um, it was not to my best of my knowledge. We used to do in those days, um, in between tape changes where it was, you know, it's not a raw, it's a raw taping, but maybe we did multiple that night, but Coliseum home video. And that's a payday. That's an extra payday. So it could have been something that they wanted to enhance, uh, make better something for Coliseum home video. Uh, my, my gut tells me, uh, Pat wanted to either, we didn't su- do something he liked, or he wanted to try something a little different. And we went out and did it. The word we've heard over the years is that, uh, once upon a time, Vince McMahon had a bit of a meltdown and required for a Saturday night's main event that the macho man and Ric Flair go retape something. And it was quite the story to the best of your recollection that never happened with Vince, but perhaps Pat wanted to just try something different, but it wasn't a. A pissed off, fun Vince McMahon story we can share, right? No, I don't. I, I would. I think I would remember that. Uh, I don't think this is a night that they ribbed me and. Oh no! So Rody, what is he in there? They ribbed me and Rody one night. That's the following year. Put us in a shark cage, um, and held it up above the ring for a couple of matches that Bruce Pritchard was a part of. But no, I would have remembered if it was an ass chewing from Vince, or even if it was really an ass chewing from Pat, or something that he like was really upset about. If I if my gut tells me it was, Hey, that was good. Call us home video. We might need a little more time because some of us as talent who might've been on the road, they tell us to go 10 and we'd go nine, maybe eight, <laughs> but no, you, you know, so they legitimately might've said, Hey man, we didn't get enough time. Go out, get some heat on Scott for two or three minutes and then do the same finish, tweak this, tweak that. And now that'll give us time to feel uh, for the Coliseum home video. I, I, I really don't remember. How well did you adapt to this flashy ring entrance? You know, you, you had not really had a, a big, uh, I don't know, to do like this before in your career. And now you've got this sort of over the top ring entrance. Are you excited about this? Because it's a sign the company's putting some resources behind you or are you like just the lighting, the, uh, all the lighting and all that, right? Yeah. 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 It was. Look, from the very first time, I don't believe I saw one, WrestleMania one, but maybe two, certainly three. Um, But I was mesmerized by WWE's production values, always. And every year, a little bit different, and this and that, and you know, those superstar tapings and they would just be on a platform and the way they'd shoot it and all the, the full arena behind it, the snake pit, um, what, you know, Piper's pit, um, just all those kind of things. I, I always thought it was just super cool. And then, you know, get there and superstars and challenge and, you know, um, just all the little intricacies that WWE just, there's such a cut above everybody else. They refined it. And, you know, Vince is a visionary. But his vision for a television show, he's a trendsetter in, in so many ways. Look, it may not be his original idea, but he always takes ideas and makes them better, makes them more marketable in a lot of ways. Um, just, the, you know, the lighting effect, you go, okay, they're spending money and the lighting director would come to you and the the director and all that. And here's how we're going to do it. it. It meant, okay. This is a part of your push. We're adding to your production value. Get even more from the hottest new podcast going my world with Jeff Jarrett over at adfreeshows.com. Let me get granular here for a minute, folks. Not only can you get the entire my world episode library with zero ads, new episodes come your way each week early, ad free and on video starting at just nine bucks a month. 
We've also got tons of exclusive My World bonus content waiting for you, plus unique interactive experiences with your old pal, Double J. You get to jump on and ask Jeff questions, and if you joined us in Chicago this year for Top Guy Weekend, you got to hang out the entire weekend. 100% the best value in all of wrestling. Strut on over to adfreeshows.com right now to sign up. So I should mention that, uh, diesel gets hurt in late May and early June. So you're going to substitute for him as he's, uh, the intercontinental champion at the time, October 19th at a wrestling challenge taping razor Ramon with Ranger danger. Who's a local television personality pins you with the razor's edge. Of course you were originally going to win the match by count out, but when you find out you can't win the title, you challenge him to keep the match going. So you can win the championship. That's a little old school Memphis right there, is it not? I, you know what? A lot of people have like discussed that. A lot of that, I mean, it. I I like to say it's maybe a little old school Memphis with some dash of Pat Patterson psychology just yeah. thrown in there, and, and how the timing of it was. Um, but you know, obviously, this is setting up for Rumble '95. But um, again, all about the storytelling completely <clears throat> how do we tell this story um which you know a lot of ways conrad last night i sat back and and tried to analyze all of that because a lot of new fans tuning in to a product okay what is the story they they don't understand all the high line and this and that all right what's the story what's this character at wrestler a versus wrestler b so when i go back and we're talking about you know 94 it's okay they're going to tune in jeff Double J country music center, but he's a wrestler and the bad guy is a brawler. So he's going to out wrestle him and Pat would know how to craft these kind of stories. January 16th. And we've discussed this one before. You're going to take on Bret Hart and lose with William Shatner at ringside. Shatner's going to beat up the roadie afterwards. And Jeff, I know this is Brett's return uh, and his match uh, after losing at the survivor series to Bob Backlund, but in two weeks you're winning the intercontinental championship. Did you assume it would be a different finish or, you know, obviously it's not an issue for you to put over Bret Hart. I mean, he's the top baby face, but do you remember this night? What can you share with us? You're thinking about the creative, you know, I can remember. And as we sort of discuss this, if I didn't know, they certainly knew I was winning the title at, at rumble because it just makes sense that <clears throat> it's kind of an honor. It is an honor. Uh, Brett's coming back. Um, after a couple of month hiatus, I know he had been running hard for several years, uh, but I don't know if it was a month or however long a hiatus, but they chose me to go in there and say, Brett's going to have a hell of a match, but he, he's going to beat somebody clean that it won't hurt him. And we know where we're going with him, but it's a good win. And Oh, uh, Willie Shatner, uh, William Shatner and road dog and the pairing and it's entertaining. And it was an honor, uh, a main event on raw, um, a big deal, certainly for a young double J, uh, a main event on raw to get to work with Brett on his return and William Shatner. And I'm sure it was a USA network special or something that he was there plugging, but it was, um, Vince did beat people in slots unless he believes they can carry the ball. So, uh, especially during that era, there's a fun segment on superstars on January 21st. It's the final build of the show. Razor wins a squash match and then you and Rody come out and as Razor grabs the mic, Rody cuts the power to the mic. Nice little touch there, Jeff. Is that a Bruce idea, a Pat idea, or is that a Brian idea? It's, it was obviously done back in Stanford and creative rooms. So, you know, it, it feels like a Bruce, like a Pat, maybe events, but you know, just them playing it out in a creative room. And what if we did this? And what if we did that? And you know, they, they it may have come up with, okay, what does Razor actually need to say because they've been building this week after week after week and somebody says he really doesn't need to say anything okay how do we get there well here's the idea what's a roadie do he's dialed in to audio boom so you know just the fun collaborative creative process hey hey it's conrad thompson thanks for checking out the podcast here on youtube be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you can notice anytime we upload some new content and go save yourself some money right now if you're in a fund your loan or you have credit card debt it's not a matter of if i can save you money it's a matter of how much find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com